In this video, we're going to be introducing the idea of power series. Um, recall that when we first started chapter 11, um, we talked about how we were going to be looking at sequences and series because we wanted to be able to build up to representing functions like cosine x or sine x or arctan, um, these kinds of, of different functions, as um, infinite sums of polynomials because there could be some um, applications where it might be helpful to have that um, series representation of the function instead of the function itself. Um, so just wanted to remind you of, of this fact. Remember we looked at um, a function like cosine of x here. This is a tangent approximation to that function at zero, but I could add um, more uh, higher degree terms here to get a better and better approximation. And then we have this idea that if I had infinitely many terms, an infinite long polynomial here with coefficients of a particular form would actually be equal to this cosine function. Um, we also had examples like 1 over x plus 1 here. Let me go back here down to maybe just um, the linear approximation again here looking at it at 0. And we notice that as I add more and more terms, I was getting a better approximation, but it wasn't actually over the whole function. It was just over a little piece of the function. Um, but this type of um, series here, where we have not a sum of numbers, but um, an infinitely long polynomial, is a power series. And that's what we're focusing on talking about now in 11.8. Here I actually have Taylor polynomials, so that means that's like a partial sum, it's just the first n terms of that um, power series, but we want to talk about um, power series in general. Power series are actually going to be useful not just to approximate functions that we're familiar with, but as um, new functions themselves that could arise in, in different applications. So let's go through our definition. A power series, okay, and then we have a little bit of terminology here, centered at zero. So you can think of the centered at zero um, is exactly here, what we're doing in this picture, where the approximation here, see this dot here, this is centered at zero. We have some kind of powers here that involve um, x and zero, and notice that if I had a different expansion point here, this, what's in the parentheses here is becoming x minus two, as I'm centered at two. Um, for just our um, tangent line approximation, that's the, the point of tangency, okay? But as we add more and more terms, we're still centering our approximation on that particular point. Okay, so a power series centered at zero, that particular case, has the following form. Okay, we'll have this infinite sum, the sum from n equals zero to infinity of cn x to the n, which would be equal to c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c3x cubed etc. So we have this idea of this infinitely long polynomials, infinitely long polynomial, excuse me, um, where these c's here, okay, are going to be some expression in terms of n. So if this was a sum of just cn, instead of having the x to the n part, that would be exactly like what we've been talking about in the previous sections in chapter 11. So cn could be something like 1 over n, it could be um, n over log n, negative 1 to the n times n over n plus 1, just all kinds of different types of um, terms that we saw that just involve n. Okay. So a few notes to make on this. x is our variable. Okay, and the CNs are coefficients. Okay, and they're constants. So instead of us talking about a sum of numbers, now we have this sum of powers of X with certain coefficients in front. Okay, so that's our power series centered at zero. Of course, more generally, we could have a power series centered at any value here. So a power series centered at a, okay, has the following form. It's a sum from n equals zero to infinity of cn x minus a to the n. 
So I showed you in that previous example something was centered at 2 and I had x minus 2 in parentheses being raised to various powers. So that matches this, this definition here. So this would be c0 times x minus a to the 0 plus c1 x minus a to the first power plus c2 x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a cubed, okay, etc. So what are um, a few more ways we might talk about this power series centered at a? Sometimes you'll hear this called a power series about a or even in x minus a. Okay, mostly we'll talk about centered at a, but just wanted to mention those um, couple of other ways this, this particular type of series might be referenced. Okay, so one note that we want to make about this is note that when x is equal to a, okay, our first term would be c0 times 0 to the 0. Okay, if I replace x with a, this here becomes 0 to the 0. Now, generally 0 to the 0 is an indeterminate form, okay, but we really just want this, this first term here to be our constant term. So, we define x minus a to the 0 here to be 1. So the first term here is just c0. Okay, so we've got a constant term, then a linear term, then our quadratic term, third degree term, etc. in the power series. Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about, power series, things that have this particular kind of form. So what is the question that we're going to be interested in? Well, we want to know when does a given power series converge? So throughout chapter 11, we were interested in first when sequences converge, and then when our infinite series, these infinite sums of numbers, when did those converge? Now we want to know when does this infinitely long polynomial called a power series converge? Okay, so a few things to think about here. Note that for each fixed x, okay, um, our power series is just a sum of numbers. Remember we're thinking of in general cn x minus a to the n, n equals 0 to infinity. So for a particular x value here, this is just a sum of numbers. So the power series is a series of constants just like we would have had in the previous sections. Okay, that we can test for convergence or divergence. Okay, so what is our goal going to be here? Well, we're going to want to figure out what values of x, what particular numbers of x, will make that thing converge. Okay, so let me write down a few more things here that we want to be thinking about. Okay, so we say that the power series okay, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of cn x minus a to the n will converge for some values of x and diverge for other values. Okay, so there could be certain values of x, certain particular numbers, where that sum could be shown to be um, convergent. Other values where with a particular test we could show that the sum diverges. So our goal is to find that set of x values for which the series converges. So we'll be interested in finding that set of x values for which the series converges. Okay, so one thing to note here about um, a particular x value where all of our power series will converge, 
Okay, so let's note that um, the power series always converges at its center. Okay, so it always converges at A. Okay, so when we talk about finding the set of x values for which the series converges, the smallest that set could be is just that it converges at the point A. But many times it'll be the point A plus um, several other values of x. Okay, so why is this that the power series always converges at its center at A? Because for x equals A, our sum from n equals 0 to infinity of cn x minus a to the n would just be equal to that initial constant term. Okay. So notice that for um, our general series here, c naught x minus a to the 0 plus c1 x minus a, etc. We know that this first term here is just c naught. If x is a, then all of these other terms would be 0, so we'd just be left with whatever that constant term is. Okay, So that's sort of our worst case scenario that the power series just converges at its center. So one other thing that we want to talk about, Okay, so we've said we're trying to find, let me star a couple of these things here, maybe to highlight them. Okay, so we're going to be interested in finding the set of x values for which the series converges. The other thing is when our series does converge, then it has a sum. So what do we call that sum of the series? The sum of the series, of the power series, oops, I wanted to write this in blue. Okay, so the sum of the power series Okay, instead of being s, instead of being some number, is a function f of x, okay, equal to that infinite sum, equal to c naught plus c1 x minus a plus c2 x minus a squared, etc. Okay, and sometimes this function will have its own name already, like we can show that our infinite sum equals cosine x or e to the x or something like that. Um, and in other cases, this infinite series just defines a new function that doesn't have some familiar um, name. Okay, we, all, we often have um, functions that are defined as power series that can arise in applications. Okay, so this, this function that's equal to the sum of this, this series um, has a particular domain that consists of the set of all x values for which the series converges. Okay, so the sum of our power series is this function whose domain is the set of all x for which the series converges. Okay, so this gives you an overview of the big ideas of working with power series. What power series are, that it's this idea of this infinitely long polynomial with um, all of our powers of x and different coefficients of x, that we're going to be interested in finding the set of x values for which that series converges, and that the sum of that power series will be equal to a function whose domain is the set of all those x values for where, um, for where the series converges. Okay, so keep watching to see some examples of how we're going to go about um, finding where a power series converges.